So let's go with the quick review. I have like a mind map here of the old things that we have already discussed. So you have learned in the previous units a little bit about like different types of sentences. And there was one thing that you had to really understand was the, the idea about uh, clause, right? Um, so a clause is, um, uh, let's say a sentence, right? In other words, that um, should consist of at least one subject and at least one predicate, which is a verb, right? In, in this case, um, I have uh, several links that I might share with you. Just let me show you. I have this video, just like a quick review. And what is a dependent point? So I think I haven't shared this video with you in the study material, but just in case, if you want to have a quick review of these ideas, or maybe you still have some doubts about it, I will share this link with you. I just send it in the chat box. So you can just save the link uh, and uh, watch it later, okay? So there are just like more ideas about what class is and uh, different types of sentences. And well, the next thing that we have learned, uh, right, about clauses, that they are independent and dependent clauses. And uh, uh, we know that sentences are also divided or characterized, cat categorized, or categorized into different, uh, let's say, uh, categories, right, uh, according to their complexity. And uh, here I want to say that uh, so far we finish all the all, uh, three units and you have delivered the tasks and I'm very happy. So talking about the progress, I um, read your sentences, your paragraphs, uh, so they are uh, well organized. Uh, so you are doing great. I mean, I'm very happy with results. So congratulations. Um, Thank you. So uh, this, uh, these were like things that we discussed, right? So far about the sentences, that they're a simple, complex, compound, compound complex. We learned uh, some things that you were also mentioning uh, that was very interesting to learn about fun boys, the acronymics, right? Uh, that are very helpful to uh, memorize the coordinating conjunctions that help us to create compound sentences. And uh, the other uh, conjunctions that we uh, learned about and uh, some links that you had, right? And we dis you, you discuss in the forum also, the subordinating conjunctions form the complex sentences. And after creating two sentences, you had to create a paragraph, right? That was the last um, uh, unit, unit three, right? The last task where you had to write one paragraph. And in this uh, um, unit, uh, you have learned about main parts of the paragraph. So actually, when I explain my students what the paragraph is, I want them to refer or let's say, imagine that the paragraph is like a hamburger, right? Not having one uh, like piece of bread, the bun, first bun, the top bun, uh, it is not going to be a hamburger, right? It will be maybe a sandwich, right? Or not having bread, right? It will be just a salad. So in order to create a good paragraph, you need to have all the ingredients, right? Or all the parts of the paragraph, like in the hamburger. Uh, so the main are topic sentences, supporting sentences. Well, topic sentence, that would be one, right? Supporting sentences and conclusion sentence. And in order to have a really good uh, paragraph, you need to be sure that this paragraph also has the aspect of unity, uh, which means that all of these sentences uh, are related to one main idea. So then it will mean the paragraph has the unity because they all are related to that main idea. If uh, one part is not relevant, so then uh, it lacks unity. Right, the paragraph lacks unity. And another thing that we also learned was the coherence. We will talk more about coherence in the following uh, unit. But the general idea is uh, I always say the uh, transition words, or let's say linking words, those that link ideas, sentences, 
uh, they uh, uh, bring this coherence, this sticky. They are our mayo and ketchup. Yeah, mayonesa and katsu that make our hamburgers sticky, delicious, juicy. Uh, this uh, brings us like the, the taste of the hamburger, right? To mix it together. And that's what the transitions do, right? They help the leader smoothly and an uh, interesting way to follow that all the sentences, all the ideas. And if you do not use transitions in the paragraph, it's very difficult to follow ideas. Sometimes you need to read several times to get what the, re uh, the writer wants to, what kind of message he wants to um, ask to, or let's say to deliver the message, right? What kind of message? Well, so that's like the quick review. You see, we come from very simple things to more complex. And now in the unit four, uh, you uh, have learned that there are many different types of text. In fact, um, for the subject, for different courses or subjects, let's say, of this program, of VA program, you will need to deliver different types of text. They might be letters, they might be essays. Later, you might have to write articles or even uh, a research paper. I think in the, you, uh, in the sem fifth semester, you will have to start working on the research and you will write a research paper. And later, the thesis, right? Because this is how you will get graduated. And these are all different types of texts. But something that unites all of those texts is uh, the main part. They will always have introduction. They will always have body and conclusion. So um, generally, if we talk about uh, a text, a text, let's say, uh, take an example, an essay, right? We will have the introduction, but the paragraph will have the same structure as we were talking about what paragraph is. So body might have several paragraphs. Let's say in this case, in this example, we have three paragraphs. And conclusion is also a paragraph. So, but it will uh, follow the same structure, the same hamburger structure. We will need to have, uh, let's say, an introduction, a topic sentence, right? That will be like a general statement about the whole text, right? And then we will need to provide uh, also a thesis, thesis statement. Thesis statement includes your opinion and supporting uh, main ideas of the body paragraph. That means that the introduction has supporting idea one, two, and three that is stated in our thesis statement in introduction. So the first supporting idea in the introduction will be our main topic for the body paragraph one. The second will be in body paragraph two and the third in the body paragraph three. Okay, so um, generally um, in introduction, you introduce what you will be talking in the body, right? And conclusion usually is a summary or a statement of your main points or let's say restatement of introduction. So conclusion and introduction uh, usually provides opinion and the body, this is where you provide examples, facts, details. So never introduce another example in conclusion. You just restate what you have said. So new information cannot be stated in conclusion, okay? So generally, this is what the text is about, and any kind of text will have to follow these uh, simple rules. Another thing that uh, we might need to know about the text uh, or text writing, delivering the text, sometimes tutors or teachers might ask you to follow general APA, which is APA uh, guidelines. Uh, this is the format. Uh, that uh, is established. So if they ask you just, okay, follow up, you need to remember that this is the 
general format for all the writing. If they do not ask you to follow APA, but they might give you some guidelines like what shift they want, what font they want. If they do not want you to write in Times New Roman font, they might ask you to use another one that is easier for them to read. So this is something uh, uh, that, uh, uh, according to academic writing, is um, still considered as important point. Right? Follow the guidelines and uh, the format of your writing. Yeah. So, um, Ev, do you have any questions so far? Actually, yes. Um, the fonts, can we use two types of uh, fonts? Like Arian Narro? Exactly. So I have been asking you, right, Ariel Arrow, to use it because I'm accustomed to it. I have been asked by the, um, uh, well, authority for me is going to be coordination. So, um, but uh, the, the last years we have been using um, Ariel, right, Air, this, the, the, the one that you mentioned, right? And if we were accustomed to that. This year, they changed. So we have started using a different one. So that's why at the beginning, I was asking you to use one font. But yeah, when you see the guideline, try to practice already APA so you can change to Times New Roman font. So just to start like practicing and getting accustomed to the APA form. But again, uh, uh, if you ask to use APA, so APA uses only Times New Roman font. If the teacher asks you to use uh, other fonts, right? So then, well, uh, you, you might ch change, but then it will not be according to APA, okay? Does it make sense? Yes, thank um, you. You're welcome. So, um, then let's continue. So, uh, in this unit, we also need to distinguish, in order to start writing your text, we need to distinguish three main things, summarizing, quoting, and paraphrasing. Can you help me to match the definitions with those concepts? Identical to the original word for word is quoting mm -hmm. because you are saying what someone said. Exactly. Very good. Exactly how he or she said it. Mm -hmm. um, so into you. So now what is the difference between summarizing and paraphrasing? That's what I'm trying to look for. I think summarizing is significantly shorter than the original and includes only the main points and paraphrasing into your own word and shorter than the original. Mm -hmm. Yes, very good. So exactly, quoting is just identical to the uh, original word for word. So we say we use somebody's words. So those words are not ours. And usually we use the quotation marks, like at the beginning, the up comments, right? And uh, the, uh, the end of the uh, quote, we also use the, the quotation marks, right? The commas, like two commas <laughs> inverted, right, at the end. And uh, um, the difference between paraphrasing and summarizing is that summarizing, when we summarize, we just uh, uh, write a significantly shorter text, but we use only main ideas. So we use main ideas without your opinion, without anything that you add to that. So that, that text or, or sentence will be a summary, significantly shorter. Paraphrasing, sometimes it might be almost the same uh, as long as the original, but usually it is shorter. But uh, the paraphrasing, that's when you say the same idea, but with your own words. So that's why we paraphrase the same idea, but with our own words. Sometimes it, all the say, most of the time it is shorter, right? So now a very interesting question, when, why, and how to use these three ways to give your writing support without committing plagiarism. So, Believe it or not, but sometimes students, when they summarize, 
quote or paraphrase, they commit plagiarism unconsciously, like without realizing that they are plagiarizing. So this is very common. Even you, they do not, that's what means unconsciously. They don't um, uh, sometimes accept that they plagiarize, but it is very easy to check. So how to check, actually, usually how do teachers check plagiarism? There is a, um, an online, uh, it is called like this, plagiarism checker or plagiarism detector. You might find free detectors or there are paid detectors that are like, uh, well, have more qualities, right? Or characteristics that you can use. So, so that's why plagiarism nowadays is very easy to catch. Maybe in the past, you need to have very knowledgeable teachers who needed to remember quotes and uh, information word in word so they can catch the plagiarism. But nowadays, plagiarism is caught very easily. Okay, so how, why? So first of all, it is important to use them outside sources we need to use them to support but we need to be careful so first of all why do we use them we use them to provide support for your claims so you provide your opinion your answer right and you support it using paraphrasing summarizing or quotations um, also we use it to add credibility to your writing that what you say is also supported, credible, it is true. It's not something that you invented and uh, uh, is wag, like, I mean, it's difficult to prove. So it is, there is a proof and it's credible, right? Uh, also to give examples of different points of view on the subject or call attention to a position that you wish to agree or disagree with. And also to highlight a particularly striking phrase, sentence or passage. So some students ask me, can I use the quote as my answer? Well, the answer, my answer, quick, short answer will be no, right? As the answer, no, right? So obviously your answer will be your own answer, but you can use it maybe in this case to provide support for your answer, right? Or add credibility to your answer. Okay, so can I use the quote for my topic sentence or conclusion sentence? No, of course, because this is where you provide your opinion and you just summarize what you just said in the whole body paragraph. Okay, so, but sometimes when you give a speech or you're writing an, um, an essay, you might use a quote at the very beginning as a just like, uh, introduction to your text, not the part of introduction, but as a top quote, right? So, but that quote should be explained in the text. So within the text, that there should be a connection of that quote and the text. Sometimes it is used. Or sometimes speakers, when they give the speech, they finish the whole speech not as a part of the conclusion, but just to finish. And that will be like to call attention to the position. They might finish their speech with a quote. Okay. So usually the quote will be not as a topic sentence or conclusion sentence, but only as a part that is already uh, kind of linked, right, to the text. So um, do you have any questions so far? <laughs> No, nope. not yet. Okay, let's then continue. So what should I cite? What should I cite? That's another question. And uh, uh, we will see like uh, the importance of quotation. So usually this one is a formula, a formula of my text sentences and how it might look. So usually you give your voice, right? You introduce your ideas. You analyze, you provide analysis like uh, explanation, maybe definition with your own words. You provide your own ideas, examples, and then you might use the experts way in. This is where you introduce your maybe uh, examples, right? Taking from other experts, 
which are all paraphrased, quoted, or summarized, right? So this, this is how it looks. So the answer cannot just exist by using just this. I couldn't say it in another word, so I just used the experts and I copied the complete text and this is my answer, okay? So that is not possible to do, it's not correct, okay? And the next one, uh, some tips, how, uh, that was the question, right? What should I quote, how, why? So tips on quoting. Make sure the, that the quote supports your main idea. So these quotes, let's say if you use a quote, it should be related, okay? Only use the quote when using your own words takes away from the meaning. So when the quote is like really suitably stated, catchy, and you think if you paraphrase it uh, or summarize the idea, the, the, the value will be lost. So then it's better to use quote. Um, we can also use, uh, well, it's a good idea, let's say, to use quoting. Uh, strategy is when uh, you prepare your reader for the quote, right, with the introductory phrase or sentence. So that's another answer to the previous questions. You need to have some of your voice, your ideas, so then you prepare them to that quote, okay? Or we can also comment after the quote. So in this case, we comment on the quote on what you believe the quote means in terms of your main idea. So you need to elaborate the quote. You cannot just say the quote and that's it. You need to explain the significance of that quote, what that quote means with your own words, okay? So that's the some ideas that you might need to consider when quoting, when using the exact words from one or another source, okay? Any questions so far? Um, we are supposed to write three um, paragraphs on the body paragraph. Mm -hmm. So um, would you suggest to put three quotes or? Uh, yeah, I would suggest if it's a short text using just one quote, using one summary and one paraphrasing sentences, but not many quotes in a short text. Usually when it is already a research paper, well, also you might uh, consider using several quotes, maybe up to two, three. So obviously if it's longer, you might have more. If it's a very short, in our case, it's like one, uh, two, three paragraphs. It's a very short, 250 words. And if you use uh, um, three quotes, it's gonna be too much. What happens with your ideas? You will not have enough space. Oh, let's say it will be like overwhelming. You will get more words than necessary. So in this case, that's why you were, are required to provide three different ways of supporting your ideas, quoting at least one, so, uh, summarizing and paraphrasing, right? So if it's really necessary to have two, but I would suggest avoiding it. So using only one would be totally enough, okay? Because it's a short text. All right, let's continue. Any other questions? Before I forget, um, I'm writing one quote, one summarize, and uh, I remember one paraphrase. Exactly. That will be for the assignment, right? For the la la final task, right? Okay. So, and uh, well, some more tips, what I should quote more specifically. So anything that is not common knowledge. My students ask me, teacher, how do I know that it is come, that it is not common, that it is something that somebody invented? Well, if you are not sure, but you are reading the source, right? Because obviously, how do you know? You read it from somewhere. So then if you are not sure that it is common or not common, just quote it, yeah? So that will be, sorry, not quoted, cited, because we already talked about citing, right? So you can use quote, paraphrasing, or summary. And if not sure, just provide uh, uh, the uh, credit where this uh, information comes from, okay? 
So that's what we got, right? That's what we're quoting. Yeah, and now how we should cite. So anytime we use quote summaries or paraphrasing, we need to cite, okay? And uh, oh, when else? Information that has been summarized or the information that he's paraphrased or information that was directly quoted, you should always cite this information, okay? And uh, obviously, if you provide any images or graphs, charts, uh, you can also mention where these uh, um, uh, diagrams or charts uh, uh, were adopted from. So this is very important, okay? So it doesn't mean that you will get uh, like a less value of your work, but it will support and it will um, kind of save you from plagiarizing, okay? So, you know that plagiarism is um, analyzed very strictly in the universities. Okay, so there are two things that you need to distinguish is citation and reference, right? So when you use quoting, paraphrasing and summary, you will need to cite both. You will not use one or another. You will need to use both. But what is the difference? The citation goes within the text of the paper. It is short, abbreviated version, okay? And the same sources should be provided in the reference where at the end of your paper, okay? As a list of sources, but this is, will be full detail to the sources, okay? And that's what I wanted actually to see how to cite and how to provide a reference. 